drizzly Wednesday. How are you? Morning, Karen. How are yeah, you? Morning. Morning, Chris. Yeah, Lovely good to see you again. Yeah, two weeks ago, so we missed last week. So yeah, we did. Good to be back. We do have a slight change of location. I'm actually at Castle Leyden. I, I, I've been off, off sick, so I'm not in prison, folks. It, no, I know it looks like it. We were joking <laughs> earlier um, against the white background and then the light, but yeah, slight change of location. <laughs> yeah, and I'm not in a hospital. This is not, <laughs> this is not a hospital curtain either. It's the, it's the really bad light today, so. <laughs> oh my word. <laughs> two weeks how much has possibly changed <laughs> um, so we're thrilled today um we were having a discussion in fact as you know i refer to karen as my tech queen and over the years um we have been sharing tips i've been gleaning lots of advice from karen in terms of the amazing tech that she discovers um and being a business owner working online where a lot, a lot of people are finding new platforms new apps new websites to use um so i think uh what i found really interesting i was having as i was saying to you karen i was having a one-to-one -one with someone and they sent through a pdf list of all of their tech tools and apps that they found really useful but we'd already planned this chat like months ago hadn't we um, yeah. and i thought this is really interesting because we take for granted that what we have been using and now I consider a lifeline there are certain apps on my phone I could not live without um, and we thought actually we forget that some people are still quite new um, and Karen in particular has spent years like testing and trialing these things and together we've worked on certain um, apps as well haven't we so we thought what we would do is actually provide a list of the top free tech tools that we've got, but then also um, to avoid the overwhelm, which ones we would recommend that you spend a little bit more for because it, you know, rather than scrimp on um, to make sure that you're getting the best value um, because ultimately tech is amazing. Even though I'm, I consider myself a tech ditz, when I get my head around it and when I see how much we save in terms of time and resources, there's some amazing apps out there so Karen I would love to hear like you have obviously with your tech expertise um, and websites but everything from time management um, content management tell us what do you find are your top recommendations well I mean some of them might seem sort of not like a tool it's kind of quite obvious so I mean I've got a huge list of them but I suppose I'll go through in sort of bits and pieces um, for for video obviously anyway if you want to host your videos you've got vimeo and youtube which is free and i'd recommend using these because you can then embed them into your site and share them on social media and um, in terms of editing again depends if you've got an apple uh, computer or a pc computer and there are some basic kind of editing ones but i did a lot of sort of checking around and testing different ones out because I wanted it for a specific thing just to kind of trim videos and just simply export them again and I, I use something called Fulmora which I pay a yearly fee I think I got it first of all for about $39 right but yeah so that has been a lifeline for me for editing all our show videos and the ones that yeah the shows I do as well so it was worth me spending that but extra um, in terms of images, um, if we're going sort of for the visual tools first, um, Canva, obviously, if people don't use Photoshop and things like that, then Canva is a great one. There's other ones like PicMonkey as well. Um, uh, Gimp, I think, Pixlr, there's quite a few, but I found Canva's quite easy and seems to be popular. Um, getting images to use on blogs websites social media there's plenty of free sites like unsplash pixabay pixels um, and if you want something a bit more unique then you can go for the paid ones um, and generally ones like deposit photos 123rf um, those are sort of at the lower end of the price spectrum and then you've got ones like shutterstock and iStock, which are more the higher end but you tend to get a, a wide range of images I do find um, deposit photo. Is it deposit? I'm, yeah. Yeah, that's right, isn't it? Um, I do find they're quite good. I found um, an amazing platform called AppSumo that if you register, they will give you the links of special deals. Um, and I managed to get sort of some credits for a bulk price 
for the year, which I still haven't even used. I didn't make a dent in considering I'm doing more social um, and I'm using it for certain client activity as well. Just the odd picture. Um, but yeah, I, I find that their images, especially with the um, stock images, can look samey. Um, and it's really good to, like you say, looking at the different picture uh, libraries to have a look at something that you feel is a bit more in line. I find there's a lot more um, diversity in, in the, the platform that I'm using, which I loved straight away. I was like, oh, brilliant. Some more images there. Definitely. Well, I actually got that AppSumo deal after you told me about AppSumo. And, and I think it was 200 images for $39 or something. Yeah. So it was massively cheaper than going to somewhere like iStock where you can pay something like, you know, 60 for 10 images. Mm, so, absolutely. yeah, so definitely AppSumo is a great place. Um, <clears throat> what else are they? So uh, file storage and file sharing. Um, file storage, I use, personally use Google Drive because it's, yeah. I mean, I've got a huge amount of storage, but not a bad price and I pay it per year. Yeah. Um, they do give you 15 gigabytes free. Um, also OneDrive and Dropbox, you get a yeah. certain amount free or you often get it if you get your Microsoft or sometimes through your phone, you might get OneDrive space free. Um, file sharing is really key because sometimes by email, you know, when people are sending lots of images or high, sort of big, really big files and you can't always send them by email. So I've used quite a lot of WeTransfer mm. and big mail file, which I find really good. Or again, you can, if you use something like Google Drive or Dropbox, something like that, you can just share the link with someone. So those are really handy tools. Um, just go, one thing, going back to the images, another tool that I use, which I've has been amazing, is called JPEG Mini. Oh. <clears throat> and you get, you can use the trial free version. You can do up to 20 images a day um, and it compresses your images without compromising on quality. So I do this with all the um, all my websites I do. I compress all those before I upload them. Amazing. Um, I use the pro one now because you can actually resize and you can do a lot more in, in bulk in a day as well. Um, so that's a really good tool. Um, <clears throat> right, what else? I was going to say, what we found, um, we tested and tried project management tools. So there's always a big discussion and debate, Trello versus Asana. So again, if you're someone like me, I, I kind of have so many emails that are coming through um, and it's very easy to lose an email. We were, I think the second time we were working on the website or maybe even the third time, um, we decided we had used Trello before. A great tools, all of them. It just It's really based on preference of what you actually want to get out of it. Um, but you've done both. So perhaps you can do a really nice um, comparison because a lot of people, that's that's the shiny object syndrome. Which one do I use? Which one do I work for? But if you're doing project management, um, I personally am a fan of Asana, which means that you know every page we had a set of tasks and we could manage who was doing what, who was assigned the task and when it had been done, rather than lots of emails going back and forth. And for me, I would get lost in email trails. So our email discussion of what goes on this page, what does this, um, it was just so much easier for me on Asana, but how do you find the two compare? Um, I think they were fairly, fairly similar, except and I think they've also the trailer was based on the board. So you can have certain boards and you can kind of move things around. You can also have lists that you can tick off. So that was quite similar. Um, the problem is a lot of these take a lot of time to set up. Yeah. And that's the first hurdle to get through is actually setting up. So while I've used those, I've ended up always going back to Slack. And I know Slack <laughs> is not a project management tool. It's but good. it's really easy to use. You can, it's free. You can create as many workspaces as you want. You can create things in different channels. Um, and there are actually tools. There's one I've been looking at called Workast, which you can integrate with um, within Slack to do a task list system. Oh. And that's free as well. So I'm going to have a look at that when I've got some time. Um, another one that's popped up that people have mentioned is called Freedcamp. And I'm actually going to speak to a lady, Nicola, who does similar to what I do. Um, and she she uses it and told me about it. So I'm actually going to have a chat with her, maybe, you know, pay for it, some of her time to go through and 
learn all about Freed Camp because that's apparently free for ever and it's supposed to be really good. Oh, it's yeah, it's got it's got things from a trailer and a sauna, but apparently a lot of people find it really user friendly. So yeah, definitely looking forward to checking that one out. Um, one of the other things I suppose that always pops up is the calendar scheduling, like schedule a call. Well, I, I, I've already got, I've used both Calendly and Acuity. I absolutely love them. It just saves so much time and then going back and forth to try and find the right calendar date, the timing, here's the link, this is my availability, just booking a call. Absolutely yeah. love it. Um, yeah. In fact, to be honest, when I was looking at systems and processes, because again, if you're a business owner, you do not just save the time, just save the time to um, do, you know, avoid the back and forth. Here's the link again. How, how have you find, found the different platforms? Yeah, I haven't used Acuity. Um, I use Calendly because Calendly is free. I think Acuity, you can only go paid. I have used mine for paid. And yeah, it's all over my website. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't think thing. you can go in at a free level and <laughs> sort of try it. I think you go straight in as paid, but I think it's it's probably got, they probably got slightly different things that they, that they work. I think maybe it's a bit more in depth, Acuity. It's got Acuity. maybe more offers, but I'm using Calendly Pro at the moment. And then there's another option, which um, you can then add payment in as well. And that works then quite similar pricing to Acuity. So, but the free Calendly I found brilliant, especially if you just sort of want to go have a button, you know, click and schedule a 30 minute chat with me, or you want to set up a meeting with a client, here's my link of availability. Yeah, like, like you say, that back and forth of emails and, oh no, okay, I'm not free then. Oh, okay, when you free then, oh no, no, I'm not free then. <laughs> I'm free then, oh, it's just, it's, it's time, you know. Well, I can't, I now can't make that date. Can we change? It's like, yep, yeah, just press the reschedule button, reschedule. go any other time. Um, the only difference that I would find and the reason why I, I am happy to pay the extra for Acuity is that um, I have a lot of questions before you book that time. So, um, I think a lot of people, when they say, oh, can we have a chat about PR or marketing or social, you know, what, what can you do, um, which is on the, on the website, but on the other hand, you want to make sure that they're ready, that you understand their challenges before the call. So I, I set up a, quite a few questions to understand about their business before that call happens, so that by the time we're on that call, I'm using that time far more effectively and efficiently having done a bit of research on them um yeah i've got that in calendly as well have you yeah um, i suppose I, I think that i think that they even do it on the free one but you might be limited to the amount of questions you can have but okay. um i'm not sure that's something i might have to check on and then i'll post in the comments but because i'm on the pro one i'm not sure but yeah i put comments in there and one of the great things as well it links directly to your zoom account uh, so, yeah so when people now book a call yeah. It creates the Zoom link straight away, goes into their calendar, goes into your calendar and it's done. So, yeah, it's just and send reminder emails and all of that. So just yeah. save so much, so much time. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But I'll definitely I'll check out. I'll check out about the question thing and see and compare. Yeah, the just personalised links, all of that. I mean, I think it's like you say, just if you want to try them out, there's plenty of free versions that just to find your way around it and then look at what your needs are before you start thinking about upgrading to paid accounts. Yeah. What you actually need because sometimes you're paying this monthly subscription. And I think tech is the worst when it comes to looking at your budgets and what you need. The amount of times it's always a tech software tech application or, or, or subscription that I'm sitting there going have I honestly used that in the last six months and mm -hmm. can I go away with it so it's really good if you're like me shiny object syndrome or oh, what would make it so much better is it actually worth the time um I know that there's some people that use say for example Divsabo for contracts and if you've got agreements um but actually you know that that's super beneficial if it saves you time but if you don't need that set up then you know again it's just what are your requirements what are the what is it actually needed what's needed and then yeah it and it's, it's, yeah it's, it's knowing that that money is going to be well spent you know sort of quoting systems and things like that are really expensive I mean I know someone who, who was using Infusionsoft paying 200 pound a month and she wasn't using it for nearly a year because she was still wow. busy setting up and I'm just like that's crazy you know you 
you should have just yeah cancelled it or just not done it until you were actually ready to launch your business and go with it because there was other things you could have started off with that have got automation like MailChimp or MailerLite mm. for free and those have got automated email systems yes yeah. it's not quite a built-in CRM system like Infusionsoft but but then there's others like Active Campaign, which are set up for email marketing, but they kind of they I think that's kind of the in-between of the free ones and something like Confusion Soft, where you can use it almost as a CRM system as well, and um, with all the sort of email automation workflows and that. So um yeah, so definitely I think it's it's starting off free and trying out before because you might pay for one and you're stuck into a year contract. And then you're not using it because you realize, well, actually, I'm not ready to or it doesn't quite fit my needs or it doesn't really do what I want, you know, and you could have just had the free one. Which um, and I think what I found being in particular groups as well, um, it's all very well people suggesting and recommending these things. But again, like you say, if you're just starting out, almost give it the six month free trial to see how often you're doing this and if you're keeping if, if it's consistently happening because exactly as you say I'm sure the amount of times I might say to somebody write a really good newsletter or CRM system or just a way of contacting and then you go back and check in and it's like yeah I haven't started yet and it's like well you've already paid you know x amount of you know resources or time to, to focus on that um, but again to start off from basic level if you're able to do it and keep that consistency going do you find it's easy to switch over I think that's probably why people go for the best one first is that they're thinking well I will get better and I will use it if I know that money's going out but do you find it's much of a challenge to switch over and upgrade not really I suppose it depends so say for example you on MailChimp and then you want to sort of move to another email system then yeah you've got to kind of export everything and move it over and reset up your templates and stuff like that but you know that you're going to have to do some sort of investment in time and, and changes in your business and if it's not working for you anymore then do it but you know I would start with what's really simple I mean I've tried out so many things and then stopped and then tried something else and oh that hasn't worked stop and I know and like you said there's a lot of people go oh I swear by this tool you have to use it but each t it's it's unique to you I mean I've had people who said no way trailer is the best or no way Asana is the best or you know or you know whatever it may be is the best and I wouldn't use anything else but it doesn't always fit a specific person yeah. you know so so it's taking in mind that you maybe you you need to pick out maybe the top three and go and do a little trial on each of them and see which one suits you That's so I recommend there are so if you had to limit I mean I the other one that you have always talk, told me about I'm really surprised you have not mentioned it yet so I'm like oh Karen I've still got know. more on my list oh, 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 oh amazing because I was going to say yeah <laughs> I was going to say last pass is one of your favorites tell us about that one all oh, right that wasn't actually on my list I can't believe I missed that out but I've, it's because I've been speaking about it lately as well so it's sort of maybe it's gone Phew. um so that's a password vault um again free you can get a paid version but you don't need to you can use it on your computer you can use it on your phone you can use it on your ipad um, and that basically just saves all your logins and passwords into everything. So, I mean, I use it from, from all, you know, cl client websites to, you know, everything I log into that I use, all the tools that I use. I mean, can you imagine trying to re rem remember every single login and password? And if you have uh, the same across everything, that's a massive security risk. So <laughs> with LastPass, you have one um, major password that you need to remember to log in and that's it everything like else by the way folks <laughs> I need to, <laughs> I set it up because you told me to and then I forgot it I'm so sorry <laughs> I am one of those people that Karen will despair of so. <laughs> yeah I have to reset well there's always ways to get it back because it's obviously security questions or it sends yes. you know forgot password to your email something like that but honestly it has been an absolute lifesaver because once you've yes. once you've logged in, so when when you start with it, once you log in, then it pops up and says, "Do you want to save this?" and you save it, and then next yes. place you log in saves it, and then when you want to log in somewhere, you just click click on it, search for the the site that you're looking for, click launch, and it just logs in like that that mm -hmm. quick. 
without you having to type in anything so it's just you know oh, where's that password where did I write it down oh my god okay I've got to go find it from a security <laughs> risk point of view yeah absolutely for well, security also, risk because you might lose that book and also just the time wasting yes. you know the amount of times I'm like, was that uppercase or lowercase or ah, uh, and yeah, rather than using the same password for everything. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I've had clients that send me, oh, here's my login for this. Um, and then, oh, no, that doesn't work. So I've got to email back. And it's like, okay, oh, try this one. Oh, no, it doesn't work. So I've got to email back. It's just a back and forth time. And that's another thing with LastPass. You can share the password with one other person on the free version. Yeah. And then you can remove that access as well. So so there's definitely I, I just love it I think that's great I mean some of the a few others like what you, I know we're coming sort of near to the end of the time so I'll maybe just quickly uh forms Google forms brilliant if you want to just set up a form people can fill in um I've See, I love some, type, form. type form for my feedback if you're ever doing feedback which I thoroughly recommend in any of your marketing if you have done a one-to-one -one session if you have done training if you have if you've provided a service make sure that either from google forms or something like which is free as is type form you get some free options but it's a really good survey system so that it's the sort of customer management um just to make sure that you've got some feedback because you could always tweak your service i, I got some really good um critical feedback um, not pleasant, but it was like, right, I have to be aware that when I'm working with this type of client now, this is where I have to be really careful and a bit more aware um, of their situation. But I, you know, it's really important. You can't grow and provide a better service going forwards if you don't have that. So yeah, Google Forms, and they're good for, um, would you say Google Forms are good for, I mean, Google in, in general, um, like if you're doing workbooks and things like that, you know, I love Google Docs, all of that, you know, definitely. Well, yeah, if you don't have, if you don't have Microsoft Office or Office Libre or something in your computer, yeah, you can do it all online with Google yeah. Docs, Google Sheets, all of those are very similar to Word, Excel, PowerPoint, so you can um, use all those online, and it saves while you do it as well, um, so those are really good. Um, one of uh, the screen recording, it might, one of my favourites is something called Loom, Oh, yeah. So literally, yeah. if someone says to me, oh, I've forgotten how to do this or change it on my site, I can literally hop on, record what I'm doing, send them a link, and it's done literally in two minutes. So that's been really handy for me. Um, and social media scheduling, I've always used Buffer. I love it. You're a big fan of Buffer. Mm. You do? Big yeah. Fan. Yeah. I'm, I'm using, um, so again, one of the questions that come up with me, I, I've been trying with something else um, and I, I swear to God, this is when I was using Buffer and Hootsuite, it just happened, it was all plugged in. And now I'm trying with something else. Again, this is the issue with tech, shiny object syndrome. You have a look at something else and you go, <laughs> oh, this is amazing. And it was a deal on that Sumo, but it was, um, I'm using Social Bee, which again is really easy, nice format, very clean to use. But again, it schedules in. For me, it was repurposing and sharing. So I'm a big believer in evergreen content. There's a lot of the stuff that we talk about is evergreen. So to make sure that you just change the text slightly, but you like, especially if you're on something like Twitter or you have a company page, nobody is looking and stuck to your company page. So it's really good to circulate that content. So I think that was the only difference um, with, I know you can do with Buffer, you can sort of reschedule, but I think the what I quite liked about SmarterQ and Social B is that it is very much geared up so that once it's plugged in, it's just automating just completely. Um, there's a slight mm -hmm. difference between that and Buffer, but again. Yeah, I know Buffer is not be all end all, but I, and I know, you know, you have to pay to get more different tools, which gives you more options, but I just use the free one because a lot of stuff I schedule, like Facebook, I'll schedule within Facebook. And so I just use it for my LinkedIn. And it's just really simple because I can just go in quickly, do you know, put it in. I can move stuff about. I can change the time and the schedule. And it's just really, really easy. Just when you're starting out, I would just say it's, it's something I think that's really I agree. simple. I was, I was actually using Buffer on your recommendation. And then I think I told you this. I was sharing workspace with the Buffer team. They were in London for a joint sort of workspace and I, because of that I was actually saying to them 
my on my online like website lady absolutely is the one that is uh, has recommended me uh, recommended that I use Buffer. So it's because of her. I, I actually know because I was like, do you know who we are? Oh wow, this was a good couple of years ago, um, and I was like, yeah. <laughs> oh, so yeah, okay. I, I, I remember telling you this because <laughs> like, when we when we were doing our social media training together, yeah. we were yeah. going into the clients and and actually yeah. saying this is, this actually is a really good tool. It was quite. Yeah. Nice, but it was really. So again, good. it depends on the purpose. I think it's a it's a big one. It will not fit everyone's to everyone's liking. You know what I mean? You some you will need other ways of. If you have got running sort of other clients, social media and stuff like that, you probably need a, a, a bigger, more robust platform. Mm. Um, but yeah, I just find for a single business owner, just really quick, simple, and easy. Yeah. I think that I think that's most of the ones. Oh, I think one last one I'm going to share <laughs> is if you're doing events and workshops, and I think most people know this already. Um, obviously, there's lots of plugins you can use on a on a website, but if if you want something that's really easy and set up to use, um, Eventbrite or Meetup. Oh yes, Eventbrite and Meetup, absolutely. Um, can I also add in one for this? If you are, you can add like many people. People. <laughs> Well, I know, but I mean, most of them are yours anyway. From what you've told me, it's like, oh, I've got a walking insight like directory right here. Um, but the other one that I would say, which somebody had put on their list, and I thought, do people not know this? Like as as well, but Doodle. If if there's so a Doodle doc, if there are several of you, then you're trying to coordinate diaries, and obviously mm. you can't share everybody's scheduling link um I honestly love this link it's just here you go here's the set of times let's just do a tick box who can make it um and not go back and forth so many so many times as well so yeah definitely meet up if you're creating the event um I mean you know sometimes just creating a Facebook event you know that's I remember when face, Facebook started yes, of course that's brilliant I have to write that add that to my list yeah <laughs> I mean, you know, when Facebook started back in the day, um, you know, I was using it purely for from a social perspective and every event or every, you know, we're going out here tonight, who's in? And it's like, yeah, create the event. But we forget, don't we? You know, it's, if you're doing if you've got a business page, absolutely create the event. Um, yeah. And, and you can do events on LinkedIn now as well. Yes, there's there's. <laughs> Not more I just saw LinkedIn are now doing stories I'm not too sure why but you know we're going to find out <laughs> so yeah LinkedIn's always changing so you can do events there as well so yeah wonderful. fantastic um okay well I think um, yeah I mean I'm sure there's loads more that we could think of Tessa I mean I was just looking through my last pass actually and thought right where can I find a list of all the tools that I use all the time uh, you know and try not forget any and actually I looked through there because all the logins are there and there was a there few others that popped up and I was like, what's that? And what's that? What's that? I haven't <laughs> used them, but at some point I've gone, someone's pointed me there and I've signed up. <laughs> as long as you're not paying 200 quid a month. I know, they're all free <laughs> ones, yeah. yeah. Um, I just want to say hi, Nikki. We see that she's joined today. So yes, <laughs> thank you. And um, yeah, I, I absolutely, I'm the same actually. I love Slack. So I'm, so, I'm definitely somebody from pen and paper we were talking i think question came up as to using tech and if you're a pen and paper sort of person how to like merge the two together and these are these are apps everything that you've mentioned is something that if i am a, a traditional diehard pen and paper person this is yeah. these are all easy to adapt to and, and get to know for sure absolutely yeah no definitely i think and i think what i'm going to do which is sort of we were chatting about just beforehand was maybe get together pdf a little pdf ebook of all of that i mean there's just so many you will never be able to kind of cover them all but i'll, I'll focus on the ones that i use day to day yeah um so thank you so much if you have any suggestions yourselves please let us know um we're always looking aren't you we definitely karen is <laughs> i am always always looking so yeah, absolutely. Always looking at ways to improve the way that we work. Um, but thank you so much for joining. We'll be back next week. Uh, we're back on track until the end of the year. So yeah, we're all scheduled up. Um, but thank you so much for joining and hope it's been of use. Take care now. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Take care. Bye.